Välkomna tillbaka. Nu ska vi få höra på en presentation av ett mycket intressant bolag, Serad. Denna presentation kommer att hållas på engelska utav vd Tim Törn. Please Tim, do present your company. Thanks for the introduction. So uh, I will start with a short introduction about the company, uh, say a few words about the radiation therapy market and give a bit of an overview. What are we bringing to, to the market, our solutions and products? And then I will finish up the presentation with our business model, our growth strategy, and uh, then we are looking into the financial highlights. So let's get started. I mean, um, to give a short overview, I mean, the company has been uh, uh, growing pretty rapid over the past years. Um, we had last year finished the year with a revenue of uh, around 260 million uh, sec at a gross margin of 60%. We generated an operating profit of 36 million sec. All this is accomplished with a team of around uh, 60, close to 70 people now. So if you take the highlights uh, from last year, I mean, order intake grew 13% uh, uh, to 350 million sec last year, creating an order backlog uh, of 425 million sec. I will come back to this later, but 50% roughly of the order backlog are related to product sales. The other 50% are related to service contracts, which are usually converted into revenue over the next three to five years. Revenue grew with six, sorry, 18% last year and as I said, I mean, generated an operating income of uh, 13 million uh, sec during uh, the last year. So if we then take a closer look at the market, um, essentially patient or cancer treatment is conducted in three different ways. There's the uh, surgery, uh, there's the drug therapy or chemotherapy, and the third uh, uh, modality is radiation therapy. CRAD visits products is focused on the radiation therapy market. So if we look at the uh, development in radiation therapy, uh, the CRAD solutions are contributing to a much more precise treatment, allowing a much more precise treatment at, at the same time create the safety for the operator, for the patient, but also create an eff efficiency advantage uh, for, uh, uh, for the treatment. All this comes with a cost of approximately 5% of the total investment that a center needs to take to invest in the treatment uh, uh, system. So one very important aspect looking at the CRAD case is we are uh, convinced that the CRAD technology is on its way to become standard of care. And what we mean with standard of care is that eventually all Linux in the advanced markets are going to be equipped with surface uh, tracking. And there are a number of indications that we are seeing in the marketplace right now. Here in the Western world, the large majority, almost all tenders are, uh, that are published for radiation therapy equipment today are including uh, surface tracking in one way or the other. And one very good example is a huge tender that was published last year in uh, Spain, uh, where the government uh, went out for uh, uh, purchasing around 80 uh, Linux, and they made it for the first time a hard requirement that all Linux are actually equipped with surface tracking. So this is another confirmation of uh, our assessment. Another very important point here is that if you look at all the major Linux vendors, they have secured access to this technology in one way or the other. So um, CRAD is cooperating very close with uh, Electa and also with Accuray, but also if we look at the proton market, which is the spearhead of radiation therapy, um, then we see that essentially all centers and all the vendors are including surface tracking in the most recent project. So very encouraging news on the way to make this technology standard of care. If you take a little bit a different angle and look on the clinical adoption and how that has developed over the last years, I think in the bigger picture, radiation therapy has developed towards high precision radiation therapy. And with that come more requirements, hard requirements on accurate treatment and ensuring that the patient is exactly in the right position. If you look at this chart, it's showing the different indications that are treated with radiation therapy. And we are looking at the year 2015 and the year 2020 and show that based in 2015, the focus for our technology was only on treating breast uh, uh, patients, which is certainly a large indication, but it was one indication. If you look at 2020, it was more than 70% of the patients that are treated at any given uh, center that is equipped with uh, surface tracking technology that are uh, benefiting from having uh, the CRAD uh, system installed. 
So some general market data, uh, I will take this very quick. There is a fundamental driver uh, uh, with regards to the adoption of, of this technology. There is a trend, and that you see in the lower right corner, from conventional treatment techniques, um, where we see the trend going towards high precision, so-called stereotactic, or as it's called here, hyperfractionated treatments. So comparing here 2016, yes, a few years back, and 2030, we can clearly see that in 2016, the large majority of the patients were still treated with conventional uh, treatments, whereas we see the strong push um, towards the high precision treatments, 39% uh, SBRT, SIS, SIS cases in 2030, and 33% hyperfractionated. So a very strong push towards high precision treatment, and in order to deliver this in a safe way, uh, a patient positioning equipment like CRADS is required. So if you look at the overall market potential, I mean, there are different, different angles. I mean, first of all, there are roughly 1,300 uh, Linux sold every uh, year. If we uh, play uh, a little bit forward here and say, OK, we are at the standard of care uh, position, these 1,300 Linux, they are not all going to be installed in the advanced markets, what we call the advanced markets. But we assess that roughly on an annual basis, 700 or more Linux can be equipped and will be equipped with um, surface tracking uh, equipment. So that gives us roughly a potential of 1 billion sec. Then there is, of course, the installed base. Linux that are installed uh, at the various centers worldwide, there is an upgrade opportunity, a retrofit opportunity for us to go in and upgrade the installed uh, Linux with surface tracking in order to enable them to uh, treat also SBRT, SIS cases, for example. And then the service business. If we look at the service business last year, it has been growing quite rapidly and was reflecting roughly 13% of uh, our total revenue. Um, but we see a strong trend to, for this to grow. So if we put all these buckets together, that is roughly describing the market potential for CRAD in this environment. Perhaps a short overview on the entire market. Most of you might know some of the companies here. There are, on the one hand, the Linux vendors uh, or the, the proton therapy vendors. There are the software companies, like, for example, Raysearch, dosimetry companies, Scandidos here from Sweden is one uh, example, and then the patient positioning where CRAD plays a major role. If we look at the value proposition, there are two angles. One is the efficiency aspect, the operational efficiency aspect, and the other aspect is the accuracy aspect. So as I mentioned earlier, I mean, there is a strong push towards high precision uh, treatment that requires also a high precision patient positioning and also monitoring during the treatment. In other markets um, where the main challenge is perhaps to provide uh, radiation therapy to all patients in need. And here I'm thinking specifically about the Asian markets. There is a strong need to combine the accuracy aspect with the operational efficiency. And here, this is now one example of a study where we are showing how CRAD can help to increase the efficiency uh, significantly, allowing them to treat more patients with the existing equipment per time. Taking a close look at the competitive landscape. And I think we should look at the installed base, um, where CRAD has roughly a market share of one third versus two thirds uh, our main uh, competitor, VisionRT, a UK based company. When we look at the new installation, the chart looks slightly different. Then we are more looking at the 50 50, or CRAD is already slightly above uh, the 50%. And that is due to the fact that CRAD has, over the years, very much focused on building up its direct sales organization, but Late, uh, recently also engaged in certain several um, uh, OEM partnerships. Uh, so we uh, joined uh, Elector, but also teamed up with uh, Accuray. A close look at the solutions that CRED is bringing to the market. Um, a typical treatment is, as I mentioned, uh, a fractionated treatment. Um, when we look at the high precision treatments, it's less fractions than we are speaking more about five, seven, nine uh, fractions. The conventional way is 30 fractions for each patient, meaning the patient needs to come back, needs to be positioned 30 days in a row. So there is obviously, if you look at the treatment, there is obviously quite some, some overhead for the positioning aspect, and that's why CRA can contribute. Um, but that is where CRA can contribute to improve the setup and speed up the setup uh, process. 
If we look at the clinical advantages, um, the system compared to other positioning devices is dose free, which means less side effects. It's non-invasive, clearly an advantage from an ease of use perspective. It is markerless, which clearly creates a patient comfort aspect uh, compared to how it was done before where the patient was actually tattooed. Less impact on the daily workflow, usability advantage. CRAT has put a lot of effort to integrate the technology with the surrounding equipment, with the Linux, um, with the CTs and other equipment in order to optimize the workflow. And last but not least, the patient compliance. So the technology study shown or created in Lund, uh, Lund um, has shown patient compliance above 90%. Uh, so meaning almost all patients can benefit from uh, this technology. If we come to the business model, I mean, <clears throat> the focus of CRAD is really the, the product competence. We have a strong um, a development team, we have the product management, and of course sales, marketing, and service uh, in-house. When we look at the sales channels, uh, we are focusing on three ch channels. One is the direct sales organization. We work with distributors in certain markets, um, independent resellers that buy the equipment from us, mark it up and sell it to the uh, uh, end customer, and industrial partners. And that is essentially the new bucket, the industrial partners, the partnerships that we engaged in with Electa, with uh, uh, Accuray as well. So if we look at the different uh, channels and score them, I mean, this direct sales organization is essentially um, in the current market situation uh, so that, I mean, the more efforts we put into, uh, the more sales resources we put into the direct sales, um, then we can basically scale uh, the, the, the sales linear. But the industrial partners, it enables us to utilize the sales organization of our OEM partners. So what we have done, for example, in North America, where we teamed up with Elector, that we have trained the Elector sales organization um, and now they are promoting, they are out at the customer, promoting the combination of their Linux together with the CRAD equipment. Japan is another example where we followed exactly the same model. Perhaps just one word, I mean, the, the whole uh, manufacturing part that is completely outsourced. Um, so CRAD is not uh, assembling the devices. Uh, we don't uh, do the assembly ourselves. Um, Typically, uh, the systems are shipped directly to the customer, and then an engineer from CRAD is uh, present at the customer for the installation and then uh, the clinical application training to the customer. So if you look at the service business and take a bit of a closer look uh, at the service business, it's still fairly young uh, for us, but still a very dynamic uh, uh, business. We see a strong interest from customers to let the products be served by CRAD or by a CRAD partner. What we see here on the upper right corner, the chart is showing the attachment rate, whereas in North America, essentially all systems are um, covered by a service contract. Looking at EMEA, we are somewhere north of uh, 60%. And the APEC region is a little bit more diverse. If you look at Japan, where we have an attachment rate of 50 or more percent, Australia, where almost all systems are covered, we see also that the largest market, which is for us China, the willingness from customers to sign up for service contracts is still not that developed. What we uh, do when we sell a service contract, it is typically, of course, we give a spare part guarantee. We ensure that the system is up and running. So that's due, typically done due, uh, through preventive maintenance. But then also a large part is uh, software updates, software upgrades that are typically installed uh, remotely at the customer. If we look at our growth strategy, it is based on the three uh, pillars, product excellence, sales excellence, and service excellence. Looking at the product, I think we are in a, uh, in a, in, in a good uh, position with our current uh, uh, product. We have developed the products to a level that they are definitely uh, uh, exceeding the expectations of our customers. We are well prepared for the clinical uh, uh, you know, burning topics, uh, which is the stereotactic treatment. And we have also shown how the CRED solution can help to improve the workflow for our customers. I spoke about the service excellence uh, already, and when we speak about sales excellence, I think it is very much for us now to develop our sales organization, and uh, therewith I mean our own sales organization, but also the organization, including our partners, the OEMs. 
And perhaps to finish the presentation here with this slide, a few reasons to invest in the Seabrad share. First of all, I mean, the Seabrad products bring value to the society in the fight against uh, cancer. I think what is very important looking at the Seabrad case, we have already achieved the point where we have shown the value that the products bring to the uh, customer. We are an internationally recognized uh, company with a market access to all major markets uh, in Americas, in Europe, but also in uh, Asia. I spoke about the factors that are having an impact on driving the need for accurate patient positioning and patient monitoring. So the overall trend in radiation therapy is certainly pushing in a direction where the demand for our technology is rather increasing. And last but not least, I mean, CRAD has a very stable financial uh, uh, platform. The company is debt free and currently we have more than 100 million sec in cash on the bank. With that said, I finish my presentation and... Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, very interesting presentation and a very, very interesting company. Uh, let, let's turn to the US market. Uh, it's a bit different than the, we see here in Europe. You have a large amount of treatment mm -hmm. coming from freestanding clinics and so forth. A very huge, large in-store base, a lot of repeat sales. Currently, in the US market, where would you say uh, how large part of uh, the install base today have surface tracking right now? So <clears throat> in average, and that's more the global view now, we, we are looking at uh, somewhere north, a little bit north of 20%. The US market is certainly a very progressive market, uh, certainly a bit ahead of, of the global market, and that is due to, um, I think, two factors. First of all, uh, the reimbursement system in the US is clearly incentivizing what I call here the stereotactic treatment. So clinics are incentivized to invest in technology to treat their patient according to these uh, treatment uh, uh, protocols. And that, of course, creates an incentive for them uh, to invest in the technology. And there is also in ours. So that is one aspect. The other aspect, and that has a bit historical reasons, um, the technology was launched by, or let's say Varian as one of the major Linux vendors, has launched the technology in the US first. So they kind of paved the ground uh, to uh, launch the technology there. And then a wave started and came over to Europe and then uh, also to Asia. So that are, I think, the two factors uh, that have an impact on the attachment rate. Services, you mentioned that, and, and that's becoming more, even for, yep. for, for Linux manufacturers, yep. becoming a more and more uh, important part of the business. Could you more in detail outline how you work to, to increase mm. Uh, services as part of your overall yeah. revenue. Yeah, so the, I mean the service business is a very interesting business for us. Uh, uh, first of all, because it's re uh, creating recurring uh, revenue, but also it allows us to stay in touch with the customer over the lifetime of the product. And certainly, a customer that has need for a surface tracking system for a certain application today might have other needs uh, tomorrow, and uh, that uh, allows us to to keep the the, the 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 close contact. If we look at the service business uh, directly now, so I mean, from our perspective. Uh, what we can conclude is that the products in general are fairly stable. So um, the focus is really on the software side. Customers like the idea of getting software updates, um, getting additional uh, functionality, slightly improved functionality as part of these uh, service contracts. But then the other aspect, um, and that depends now a little bit again on the market, but customers like the idea of having uh, a planning security over the lifetime of the product from a financial perspective as well. And what we also see is that when we service the product on a regular basis, I mean, the uptime is, we, we can guarantee a high uptime for the customer, which of course gives them the freedom and peace of mind uh, to be able to trade their patients when needed. You mentioned proton therapy, mm -hmm. uh, it's very, and, and it makes common sense that uh, surface tracking is excellent yeah, in that yeah. area. I think a lot of investors are quite unfamiliar mm -hmm. with proton therapy. Mm -hmm. Could you just outline a bit actually what it is, why precision is, um, precision is always important, but why it's so extremely important with that therapy, and then look on how CRAD comes into it, because that looks very uh, interesting area uh, for you to grow. Yeah. So, I mean, the proton beam or proton treatment uh, are usually used for uh, uh, tumors that are in structures, for example, in the brain, where 
precision really matters. We can all imagine that um, the pr brain requires a very high and a very thin uh, treatment beam for delivering the dose accurately to uh, uh, the tumor. Um, the the, the uh, aspect of the beam delivery, that's basically a technical question and I, I think it has widely been solved and proton or photon, it allows to, to deliver with this high accuracy. What is critical is that we ensure that the patient is also in this in the very exact position. Um, and that is where CRAD uh, technology comes into, the, uh, into uh, play. I mean, if you look at the head, it is a pretty rigid um, uh, 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 structure. So the surface tracking system is basically a camera system to position uh, the head and monitoring the head over the treatment. Such a treatment takes perhaps 20 minutes, maybe even more. So we can all imagine a patient on the table is getting nervous, maybe they have pain, so they start moving and the surface tracking technology, the CIRA technology, allows to monitor the patient throughout the entire treatment. And in case there is a movement that is beyond certain threshold, we can control the beam to ensure that the dose is only delivered when the tumor is exactly in the, uh, in the right spot. Another example is if we speak about treatments, for example, in the lung uh, region. We can all imagine the patient is breathing and by the respiratory motion, the tumor is moving uh, within the patient's body as well. And that is another application where the CIRAT uh, system, the CIRAT technology comes into play. We are monitoring the patient, we are monitoring the movement of the tumor and ensure that the beam is only turned on when the tumor is exactly in the right spot. One thing which you mentioned, uh, at least for me, is very, very encouraging is the high patient compliance. Once again, please do explain for, for investors, why is that a necessity in this kind of treatment? I mean, from, from, a, from a customer perspective, um, there are different possibilities uh, how, how to you know, position and treat the patients in general. What they are looking for is a solution that is well integrated in their workflow. I mean, we need to imagine that, I mean, uh, they are treating minimum 20 patients, maybe up to 100 patients on one machine per day. So it is really a high, high patient throughput is kind of essential uh, uh, for them. So integration is one important aspect. The other important aspect is that they can invest in technology that they can use on as many patients as possible. And CRAD and CIRA technology and surface tracking technology uh, allows them to be used on the large majority of the patient, hence the high uh, patient uh, compliance. When I met uh, a lot of physicians from, from freestanding clinics in the US, uh, they said, you know, high patient compliance actually increase yield for us. You know, uh, do, do you have any figures? I mean, uh, does it basically increase yield? Let's talk about freestanding clinics mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Does it actually adding your surface tracking, mm. does that increase mm. yield for your customers? Yeah, I mean, there, there are different, different aspects uh, to it. I mean, I mentioned the, the attachment rate and uh, um, the way how customers are using the technology right now. I mean, those that are equipped, they are using it for, uh, 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 for, for, for the treatments uh, in, in, in play. I mean, of course, there is the, the uh, reimbursement aspect of it um, and there's partly direct reimbursement, if you speak more about gated uh, uh, treatment, where, yeah, if you use CIRA, there is a certain sum that is paid, um, but then also this uh, uh, indirect uh, reimbursement. And that's more what we see when, when it comes to the new uh, reimbursement model that's more value-based, where it's not incentivized to have certain technologies, but rather an incentive to apply certain treatment techniques. Um, and uh, um, simply when we speak about this high precision treatment techniques, technology like ours is required in order to deliver this in, in a safe uh, way. So on that way. The other aspect, uh, which is um, still, yeah, especially in the more private markets and US is certainly one of them, mm -hmm. uh, that customers are using the technology also to differentiate their offering uh, compared to the other treatment centers around the corner. And I mean, especially in, in the bigger cities, we, we see quite a momentum there. Uh, once we have installed one system at one site that is actively promoting that, it definitely creates the interest from the surrounding centers as well. So this is certainly an indirect way, but I mean, still, it is an aspect that is important for us in the way how we contact our business towards the customer. Let me just finish with a very short question. What can we foresee uh, in, in product development in the coming five to 10 years? Yeah, yeah. so I mean, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, the surface tracking technology, I think we are in a good spot. I think where 
uh, the next layer is basically uh, driving the level of integration with the Linux. Uh, because at the end of the day, what the customer wants is a complete solution comprising Linux and uh, surface tracking and maybe other systems as well. So we are working very much in this direction. Um, the other aspect where CRED has put uh, quite some effort over the past years in is uh, to develop uh, workflow management solutions. Um, that is uh, basically last year we, we, we released the first uh, product where it is about ensuring that we have the right patient on the table, that we have the right uh, uh, accessories, also immobilization devices on the table. And the beauty with that is um, it gives us a bit of a broader value proposition that we can also offer to the customers once the system is installed. Also go back to the customer and I'm speaking again about life cycle uh, business beyond service contract, um, but also of course offer it to the customer together with the initial uh, uh, purchase of the system. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Uh, very interesting company and in, in, in a truly exciting position. Thank you very much. Thank you.